Hey everyone, it's Cassius, Trip to Me Astrology Readings. And this is your horoscope for Monday, March 14th. This, um, first of all, I wish that I'd been making more videos, but I've been uh, really busy the last uh, week or so. Definitely gonna keep making videos, you know, keep putting out good content. So, here is a very important point. We had a real point of clarity, a point of spiritual vision with Mercury there conjunct Neptune and Pisces last week. The eclipse was a real turning point. And now, unfortunately, we're being turned to a period of testing. I've been talking about this period of, um, this period of Jupiter moving backwards to square Saturn. Jupiter moving backwards to oppose Neptune, and then Saturn moving backwards to square Neptune again. This is going to be ongoing from about now until June, where it starts to get really bad, and it's going to continue all the way until September. It's a very crazy, dissolving, purging time. So I'm going to break... I also, I've been talking about this since, well... November of last year, so I hope that you've been prepared for it. So anyway, today we have a conflict aspect, but also an aspect of fiery, intense love too, if you want to look at it like that, which is very much true. We have Venus in Pisces now, square Mars. Mars is stuck. It's going to keep moving slower and slower until it gets to about... 7, 8 degrees Sagittarius, and it's going to retrograde slowly back into Scorpio and then back for several months. So, right now we have what I call a, a square, semi-square complex. When you have Venus in Pisces, square, Mars in Sagittarius, and then Pluto directly in the middle, when you have a planet in between two squaring or sextiling planets, you have a semi-square or semi-sextile complex. This is extremely important. It makes it much different from just Venus square Mars. This is Venus square Mars, and Venus semi-square Pluto exactly, and Mars semi-square Pluto exactly. It just passed. It's, uh, it's still it's peaking right now, exactly. So, Mars semi-square Pluto is something that's going to be stuck on and off for the next several months as... Mars will be very slowly moving backwards here. It's going to, again, be like a fiery, purging, explosion-causing, purging, transforming, fiery, heated, and also actually very sexual. I don't know if you want to hear that, but it's true. Um, Mars semi-square Pluto. Pluto is a purging thing. It explodes something and makes you have to confront something so that you can change it. It's like a psychedelic. So with Pluto and Mars contacts with squares and semi-squares, oppositions, it's one of the most volatile aspects in all of astrology. Today we have a, a high potential for volatile social explosions. But at the same time, we have a real restraint and a real um, restraint, you know, a Saturnian uh, restraint and holding yourself back from having some kind of social explosion, depression too, hardened, you know, that cold Jupiter square Saturn feeling, that's what we really got kicked off when the eclipse opposed Jupiter and squared Saturn, but the main highlight of today, main highlight of today is Mercury right there is 16 degrees Ceres, I mean 16 degrees Pisces, conjunct Ceres opposite Jupiter. We have a grand cross today, that's what that is. A grand cross that will happen exactly on the grand cross of June 7th of this year. June 7th, as I've been stressing for a long time, will be the new moon of destruction. One of the great peaks of this period of dissolving, purging, uh, hardship, hardened depression and confusion. That's really what this next several months is going to be about. It's going to be a period of self-purification and betterment, losing all fears in the face of this cold, hardened Jupiter square Saturn, watery, purging, dissolving uh, Neptune. It will be purging and transformative in a positive way this next several months in all its incredible hardship because 
all of the main aspects happen with trines to Pluto. Jupiter is now trine Pluto. So in all of this, we are blessed by the purging of Pluto. Pluto is right there exactly, you know, Jupiter is trying Pluto. That is very important. So while all this Grand Cross stuff is hard and cold, depressed, confusing, overwhelmed, losing all of what you thought was solid stuff starts to kick back in, Pluto is at a pause. Sorry about that, the video um, memory filled up. So for this next several months, there's only, it's going to be all squares. You know, Venus is going to, pretty soon is going to come and square Saturn and oppose Jupiter too. Mercury right now is going to, this week Mercury is going to give us a very hard dose of Saturn. Today. Today is going to be a very hard, cold dose of Saturn with a potential for social Venus, volatile interactions, Mars, that have a purging, transforming, explosive nature, Pluto. So, um, the moon will make this all much worse today, unfortunately, because it's going to lock into, you know, the Mercury square Saturn, Mercury opposite Jupiter, and it's going to, you know, impose Saturn. This is the exact, exact dynamic of the Grand Cross on June 7th. On June 7th, the Sun and Moon and Venus will be right here in Gemini to square um, Neptune and Pisces, oppose Jupiter and oppose, I mean, square Jupiter and oppose Saturn. So just like the dynamic of today is cold, watery, uh, silent, kind of weird like that, this is just a taste of what's going to come in June. But, you know... This, it leaves us with this reality. The reality is, we have to have a solid structure in our lives. We have to have solid convictions and purpose and everything in our lives without even needing, you know, this positive energy in the air. We have to be strong throughout this. The fact that Pluto is one of the only planets that any planets are making positive aspects to in this next several months. As Mercury retrograde and Taurus in several months will trine Pluto and stay stuck there. As, um, you know, that's, that's how it's going to work. It's going to be... Pluto is the only, one of the only planets that positive aspects will be made to in the next several months. So that indicates that you know, as Jupiter will stay trining Pluto, and Saturn will be semi-sextile Pluto right there. Pluto. Pluto is about self-transformation. Purging, getting rid of what doesn't serve you, confronting some of your darkest, um... It's, it's about, like, purging out and changing these opinions that you've been holding on to that no longer serve you. These things that you believe that are not true, that you just stubbornly cling to because you have an ego, you know, type attachment to them. Pluto will purge them out. Just like a psychedelic, like mushrooms, is known to alleviate people's fear of death, and that's why people in old age often have psychedelic treatment. And they, they need to alleviate their fear of death. Pluto does this. Pluto will kill your fears, will force you to confront them, then you'll feel refreshed. Then you'll feel better, you'll feel pure, You'll feel strong because you finally just did the thing you were most scared to do, which is accept that reality is much different from how you were taught it was. That's what this whole Uranus-Pluto square is all about. As, as I told you before, this, this Jupiter square Saturn, it's locked into in a positive way. The Uranus-Pluto square. The Uranus-Pluto square is the most important aspect of this decade because it's purifying, purging, transforming our ideas, our ideology, and our trajectory of technological advancement. Uranus. Just like the Uranus-Pluto square in the 1930s and the people that were born with it, like the Black Panthers and the revolutionaries that were born with this ideological purging inside them, the Uranus-Pluto square is all about revolution. It's all about revolution, Pluto, of the mind, Uranus. It's about purging and destroying the old ideas that don't serve us to face reality. It's about 
It's about letting go of our old preconceived notions to realize that the world is a lot more complex than we thought it was. We need our natural rights as people. We are confronted by corrupt governments on all sides, all kinds of countries, all over the world. We are being assaulted by the powers of the world, and this is a wake-up call for the whole world. That's something political, but anyway. So, this Uranus-Pluto square locks into the structure of Jupiter square Saturn, because Saturn is semi-sextile Pluto, positive aspect, and Jupiter is trine Pluto, positive aspect, of course, and Saturn is trying Uranus. So after all this purging, after all this destruction, and confronting our fears and crazy stuff the next several months, after Saturn leaves retrograde at the end of the year, Saturn is going to come back and try and Uranus again and crystallize and solidify once more the progress from our hard lessons of the last several months. We're in for a period of great hardship right now. We have to learn how to deal with it, and learn what is pure, what remains solid after all of this, what remains pure and solid and real in our lives after we're forced to confront what doesn't serve us anymore. We can't have nothing but positive aspects all the time, because a human being that remains docile and never having to go through hardship, they don't learn, they don't grow. This is a period where we're forced to grow, and it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Also, as you know, the midpoint between any two squaring planets really intensifies that square. So Venus is semi-squaring Uranus and Pluto right now, as uh, Venus squares Mars and Mars semi-squares Pluto. So there's a semi-square complex in the air right now, and a grand cross, a great hardship week right now. It's getting to be that hardship. We're, we're, per we're getting into the hard era now. We're getting into the really hard era. So, as you can see, Venus semi-square Uranus, Venus semi-square Pluto, Pluto semi-square Mars, that's a semi-square square complex right now. You see, that's when you really know that something is being emphasized. I can't stress the importance.